It's kind of surreal how fast this happened. It was all just dirt fields and nothing really there. From the time we put the shovels into the ground to when we actually have large customers building that has been uh, in record breaking in, in speed and scale. Behind me is the start of what will be the largest cluster of non-NVIDIA chips in the world. And Amazon's newest data center mega project now fully operational here in New Carlisle, Indiana. These seven completed buildings replaced empty cornfields fast in about a year and are filled with hundreds of thousands of Amazon's own custom Tranium 2 chips and soon Tranium 3 across the U.S., entirely devoted to running AI workloads for a single customer, OpenAI rival Anthropic. So they're already running about 500,000 chips uh, in Indiana today. And in fact, it's going so well that they've actually doubled down on that order. And we expect uh, jointly we'll be running more than a million Tranium 2 chips by the end of this year. We got the first on-camera tour inside what Amazon's dubbing Project Rainier, and it's coming online amid hundreds of billions in AI infrastructure build-out announcements. Compute demand is at an all-time high, but some are concerned about a possible overbuild. I think they're still building on a proposition that we may not end up seeing be realized. It's just crazy how much building is going on. These deals all sound great on paper, but they only materialize when they're actually racked and loaded and usable by the customer, and Amazon is incredible at that. Here in Indiana, this is just the first phase, with two more campuses under construction now, for a total of 30 buildings on this 1,200 acres. It'll consume 2.2 gigawatts of electricity, enough to power more than a million homes and millions of gallons of water, which has some local leaders and residents worried. It's just difficult to keep losing farmland, and this took a lot of farmland. I was for some of the growth, and my friends tried to tell me, you, you can't let them come in because once they get their toe in there, they'll want more, and that's exactly what happened. As Amazon plans out more facilities for Project Rainier in Mississippi and beyond, we sit down with top leaders to ask how this Indiana site came together so quickly where all that power will come from, and how Anthropic will train its AI here entirely without NVIDIA. Just over a year ago, all of this was farmland. Now it's an operating AI data center, one of the world's largest. AWS CEO Matt Garman spoke with CNBC's Mackenzie Sigalos about the project. This is not some future project that we've talked about that maybe comes alive. This is running and training their models today. Cornfields, the data centers, um, almost overnight. In late 2022, around the time OpenAI launched ChatGPT, Amazon was shopping for a site for some big AI plans, talking to utility companies like American Electric Power. Ashley Savio helped steer the deal through local subsidiary Indiana Michigan Power. We introduced the concept of an Indiana data center to Amazon, and they basically said, what do you have? So we pointed Amazon to that location and the volume of extra high voltage transmission lines that exist, as well as a very substantial substation. By the spring of 2023, Amazon was making site visits. A year later, the $11 billion deal was official, the largest capital investment in Indiana history. Amazon broke ground in September 2024, and seven buildings began full operation in October 2025. It's kind of surreal how fast this happened. Big local kickbacks eased the path. The county granted Amazon more than $4 billion in property and technology tax exemptions over 35 years. State legislation passed in 2019 will save Amazon some $4 billion more over 50 years. In exchange... The state is going to have a GDP improvement of over a billion dollars and we brought in close to 9,000 jobs already. While those are temporary construction-related jobs, Amazon said it will create 1,000 long-term jobs, with at least 600 of them paid above the county's average wage. It was all just dirt fields and nothing really there. Site leader Josh Salabedra has been building data centers with Amazon for 14 years. He moved to Indiana from the West Coast in 2024 to oversee the build, hiring four general contractors to make it happen. Never seen us do a project this quickly. It's been, and that's been the most exciting part of it. We also have a second campus that we were working on as well. Why so fast? Why so fast? I, I think that that's the customer demand right now, right? And as we saw AI coming and machine learning coming, we, we changed it to a different building type. Big tech companies have been trying all sorts of structures to help them build as fast as possible. 
like tents Meta's put up as it builds a data center in Ohio. In Indiana, AWS has changed to another building type, adding efficiency and newer tech like liquid cooling for the next buildings under construction now. It's not just fast, but it is secure and reliable AWS infrastructure. And so it's not a tent out there in a field. It is a industrial enterprise scale data center. Building out the total 30 buildings here, Amazon says, will take at least two more years. When complete, it's expected to consume about 2.2 gigawatts of electricity and millions of gallons of water, which is why local resident Dan Caruso had a hundred of these signs made. We've got water issues. They're uncertain whether the power grid is going to be able to supply Amazon, GM, and the town, and there may be brownouts occasionally. General Motors and Samsung are also building in New Carlisle, a $3.5 billion EV battery plant begun in 2024. At Amazon, some 4,000 construction-related workers come to the site daily to make the speedy build-out possible. That's a lot for the roads around this 1,900-person town. It's gotten very dangerous on Highway 20 and Highway 2, and the county has responded to that with more patrols. Our police department for our town has been taxed because they do respond also. That's the biggest concern is safety. Amazon is paying $7 million for highway improvements, and county officials told CNBC it's negotiating up to $15 million more for road improvements near the site. Amazon is also paying $114 million for upgrades to other utilities, like a water treatment plant and sewer lines. Although an AI data center is different, AWS has been building data centers for its millions of cloud computing customers for nearly two decades. And Infrastructure Services VP Prasad Kalyanaraman has been at Amazon that whole time. He sat down with Sigalos in Seattle. When you want to build some capabilities for Gen AI, which are unique to Gen AI, like the network, or for instance, liquid cooling and so on, those are additions on top of foundational capabilities that we built over a long period of time. And that's what is unique about us, and that's why we're able to build at the scale that we are able to. Speed and scale are key as Amazon joins the crowded race to build data centers for AI compute. Meta's two gigawatt Hyperion data center in Louisiana and OpenAI's one gigawatt Stargate site in Texas are two of the biggest that are being built now. Many providers of that talk about gigawatts of capacity, but they don't tell you when they're going to get to gigawatt scale. What we have with Rainier is a real thing, which you've seen physically as well. But what else sets Amazon's apart is it's filled entirely with its own in-house custom AI chips. Behind me right now, they are working on delivering these towers. Two of them together is going to make up one ultra server. And inside of that is 64 AI chips. These are Amazon's own custom Tranium 2 chips. And what's especially interesting is there are no NVIDIA GPUs in there. Amazon's been designing its own chips since 2013, starting with a specialized chip called Nitro. It bought Israeli chip startup Annapurna Labs in 2015, where we got a tour. And by 2018, had its own ARM-based server chip, Graviton. Its first AI chip, Inferentia, came in 2019. Amazon launched Tranium 1 in 2021, and Tranium 2 came out last December. AWS chips have one main advantage, keeping down costs. Amazon CEO Andy Jassy said in July that Tranium 2 offers 30 to 40 percent better price performance than rival GPU instances. Availability also, like there's massive backups for NVIDIA chips. And if you can get chips faster and not have to wait online for Jensen to give you what you need, then you could get working faster and be in much better shape. Tranium chips are less powerful and simpler than NVIDIA GPUs. But Amazon says by fitting twice as many in each building, it can boost compute power and keep electricity and cooling needs down. When you're able to control the stack all the way from the lowest layer of, of the infrastructure, you're able to build the right set of capabilities that these model providers want, right? You don't need to add all the other capabilities that you don't need. Some say that Tranium 1 and Inferentia 2 instances haven't been as competitive for Gen AI training due to weak hardware specs or poor software integration. Mm -hmm. what, what do you say to those specific critiques? Sure, uh, I fully admit Tranium 1, it was our first generation chip and that absolutely was a learning chip, both from an architecture perspective as well as a software perspective. And Tranium 2, which is where we're at now, and then Tranium 3 is where we're quite excited about our, our cost competitive nature out there in the market. Still, it's Google that remains the leader when it comes to these kinds of chips, known as custom ASICs, application-specific integrated circuits. Its tensor processing units, first announced in 2016, are used to power Google's own AI model, Gemini. 
And now Anthropic just announced its largest TPU deal to date with Google, giving Anthropic access to up to a million TPUs to train its LLM Claude. There is such demand for our models that I think the only way we would have been able to serve as much as we've been able to serve so far this year is this multi-chip strategy because new data centers are coming online, we're getting the capacity that we can wherever we can. Amazon's taken a different approach. Instead of focusing on a flagship model of its own, it's invested some $8 billion in Anthropic as its key AI partner and focused on its AWS Bedrock platform to support the development of others' models. One of the things that's notable about the AWS partnership is we can bring that capacity into AWS Bedrock where you have all the customers, they're ready to deploy, and they just need that capacity on top. Founded in 2021 by former OpenAI researchers, Anthropic is focused on business clients and safety and security. Despite the recent Google deal, Anthropic has used AWS as its primary cloud provider ever since Amazon's first big investment in Anthropic in 2023. If you think about Anthropic, it really doesn't exist without Amazon. The multiple multi-billion dollar investments Amazon's made in the company is the reason why Anthropic is a player today. You've seen this partnership evolve. Have you talked about buying Anthropic? Uh, no, we love the partnership as it is. The two worked hand in hand on the Indiana site and the chips inside. They've given us good insights into what we need to accelerate in the chip, how we think about the various pieces of that, that chip that allow their models to train faster and more efficiently. Developed alongside Anthropic, Tranium 3 is expected later this year. It gives better performance, it gives better latency characteristics, it gets better power. Um, consumption per flop. And yes, that will be deployed inside of Indiana. It'll be deployed in many of our other data centers all around the world. AWS and Anthropic are bringing the new site online during an unprecedented spending spree on AI compute. With more than a trillion dollars in deals announced by OpenAI so far in 2025, among others. Are you at all worried about these AI bubble fears? Um, not for us in particular. I think others may have uh, maybe more speculative investments on there or, or speculative deals. I am not cashing any of the checks OpenAI is writing right now. They are talking about a lot of data center capability and capacity. We don't know how the power is going to work to power these data centers. And a lot of what they're announcing is fairly speculative. Turns out power is one of the reasons Indiana has become a hotbed for data center growth, with seven new or proposed big tech data center sites reportedly in the works from Microsoft, Meta, Google, and of course, Amazon. We have a lot of fiber optic cable already. We kind of pride ourselves in Indiana as being an infrastructure hub, you know, a highway corridor, railroads, you know, transmission lines, gas pipelines, et cetera. We have that all here, but really also, you know, it's the subsidies we have too. Indiana's tax breaks for large data centers include an exemption from the state's 7% tax on electricity. You know, you'd think the you know, appeal of attracting large big tech companies would be that they'd be paying taxes and, and contributing something to your economy. These big tech companies that can surely afford to pay their fair share are going to be getting a sweetheart deal. The 2.2 gigawatt AWS site will consume as much electricity as 1.5 million of the average homes in INM's service area. INM will also power a new $2 billion Google data center it helped bring to Fort Wayne, Indiana. The two data centers that we will serve will be almost as much as our entire electric load that we serve presently. INM anticipates peak power demand to more than double, from approximately 2.8 gigawatts in 2024 to more than 7 gigawatts by 2030. So just that strong demand from data centers like Amazon is leading to market-wide price increases that are quite significant. We have the capacity to provide this service. This isn't going to have an adverse impact on our existing customers. We are very diligent in the engineering and design of our system. Still, one report found that monthly electricity bills in areas near new data centers are up to 267% higher than five years ago. 53% of INM's power currently comes from a nearby nuclear plant, and 35% comes from a coal plant nearby that's slated for closure in 2028, although the Trump administration said in September that most coal plants will delay retirement to deliver the power needed to fuel AI. Now, INM is in the final stages of acquiring a natural gas plant in nearby Oregon, Ohio, that would make up 15% of the utility's power by the end of 2026. So how does that align with Amazon's pledge to reach net zero carbon emissions by 2040? The path from here to 2040 is not going to be linear. Are there going to be needs for gas-based generation? I think there absolutely will be. Amazon says it's also looking into small nuclear reactors and contributing clean energy to the Indiana grid.
We have over five wind and solar projects in India now for 635 megawatts of capacity that we actually supply to the grid already today. As for water, Amazon says the data center is primarily cooled with outside air for all but 2% of the year. AWS wouldn't disclose how many millions of gallons the finished site will use, but said it's using on-site treatment to reduce water usage by 23% per year. New Carlisle will supply the water to Amazon and then in the future GM that's going to build adjacent to Amazon. So that's a lot for a small town of 1900 to take on. Council President Marcy Kaufman told CNBC her town is doing an in-depth study of the local aquifers to figure out how to handle this project. Another issue, whether AWS will build on 10 acres of natural wetland in the middle of the project. Amazon told CNBC it's revising designs to minimize impact by the end of the year. It's just going to be a constant fight for the data center builders to be able to build in these communities because for the amount of land and resources they use, they don't provide a ton of jobs. Reactivity. Still, it's full speed ahead here, building out capacity for those million Tranium 2 chips by the end of the year and eventually Tranium 3 chips in some of these buildings and beyond. Because these buildings are there for like 30 or so years, and there's a ton of innovation that happens during that process. So it's a constantly evolving set of, of improvements that we do to our infrastructure all the time. It doesn't look like it's going to slow down anytime soon. The money will keep coming until it doesn't, and it will probably take some form of economic downturn or a complete cessation of AI progress, which I don't see anytime in the near horizon to make this stop. We're rapidly adding new capacity all over the place, and so I don't know that we'll be done ever. We're going to continue to build as our customers need more capacity.